SpaceX definitely won with NASA this time. Their Falcon 9 rocket can land and take off again up to 14 times, which has reduced launch costs by 90%. Besides, its Merlin engines are so efficient that it has a specific impulse of only 311 seconds. Seriously, what NASA couldn't achieve with its 66 years of experience, SpaceX did that in just 22 years. But SpaceX is working on their Starship with a much greater purpose, which the whole world knows by now. It's designed to carry 100 tons of cargo and over 100 people to Mars. As far as I know, NASA never imagined anything like this, did they? With more than 60 successful Falcon 9 missions and 24 Starlink launches under their belt, SpaceX is really shaking up space exploration. And back in December 2015, SpaceX has already made history by landing an orbital Falcon 9 booster on Earth, a record no one else has achieved. When you think about it, it's strange to consider that. How did a new company achieve so much while NASA, with its top scientists in 66 years of experience couldn't? Seriously, how did they manage to reinvent the rocket and its engine? Something everyone wanted but no one else could produce. If you ask me, what's the biggest X factor about SpaceX? There will be just two simple words, reusable rockets. Other companies like the Space Shuttle or Blue Origin's landing techniques have only experimented with reusability. But the result, zero. Only SpaceX has shown us that reusability is no more a science fiction, it's real. Some industry experts still argue that reusable rockets might not be more cost-effective or sustainable than traditional ones, but all those are just cover-ups of their own failures. But what really made SpaceX so different? What secret they knew but others didn't? To understand that, let's look back at the history of rocket technology, and it will start with a big surprise. Believe it or not, initially nobody used to make actual rockets. The rockets used for space missions were basically some modern modified missiles that were originally designed to deliver nuclear warheads across long distances. Take the Titan II, for example. It was originally designed to carry a nuclear warhead for NASA's Project Gemini, which limited its capabilities. The reason? The nuclear missiles already had advanced propulsion technology and high power. Additionally, building original rockets from scratch was too complex and expensive at the time, so they kept using them for space exploration, until the Apollo missions. This time, NASA developed the Saturn V, an enormous rocket that's still bigger than most rockets ever built. However, only the small crew capsule returned to Earth. The rest of the rocket was either discarded or left in space. It's weird that, at the time, this was the economical choice. Building 12 disposable rockets was cheaper than creating one reusable one. NASA was hopeful, though. Even before the moon landing, they started working on the Space Shuttle, designed to be a fully reusable rocket plane and booster system. Werner von Braun, who designed the Saturn V, had planned a reusable three-stage rocket back in the 1950s. It was designed with first-stage boosters landing on parachutes and the orbiter gliding back to Earth. So how did the space shuttle turn out? It never did, because refurbishing the shuttle after each flight took about 650,000 hours of work, which means around 74 years of work. So it was cheaper to build a new shuttle for each mission instead of repairing the old one. But point to be noted, that's what NASA reported. What about the other companies? Due to the high costs and limited success of the shuttle program, commercial rocket companies also avoided developing reusable rockets. They thought, if NASA couldn't make it work, how could we? Now you see where Elon Musk is different from them? SpaceX took a different route compared to NASA's shuttle program with their Falcon 9 rocket. NASA planned to involve parachutes and booster stages to land them into the ocean, but SpaceX went all in on making both the first stage booster and the upper stage reusable. They initially looked at recovering the second stage, but decided to focus 
focus on perfecting the reuse of the first stage booster. So instead of parachutes, which were only practical for the shuttle's smaller, slower boosters, SpaceX opted for a more complex method. The Falcon 9's boosters reach speeds over 8,000 kilometers per hour when they separate. At such high speeds, drag and structural damage would be too severe for parachutes to work properly. Instead, SpaceX uses a combination of engine burns and aerodynamic grid fins for a controlled landing. Let's check out exactly how it works. So as the booster re-enters the atmosphere, it performs a re-entry burn to slow down and protect itself from the extreme heat. It's nothing but the controlled engine firing used to slow the rocket's descent and ensure a safe return to Earth. Then, it uses grid fins to guide its fall and reignites its engines before landing to ensure a smooth touchdown on the drone ship. It's a technique that's become routine for Falcon 9 rockets after many tests and improvements. Finally, the Falcon 9 became a game changer in 2018 with the launch of Block 5, making it a truly reusable rocket. Unlike its predecessors, which stayed grounded after a launch, SpaceX kept improving the Falcon 9 to enhance its reusability. The original Falcon 9 version 1 stood 46 meters tall and had a thrust of 1.1 million pounds, but it didn't have grid fins or landing legs. It was designed mainly for launching payloads and completed five missions, including one with a Dragon capsule to the ISS. Then came Falcon 9 version 1.1, which stretched to 68 meters and boosted its thrust to 1.3 million pounds. This version introduced grid fins and landing legs for controlled landings. Even though it faced some setbacks, like failed drone ship landings, it marked significant progress toward reusable rockets. Next up was Falcon 9 version 1.2, or full thrust, at 70 meters it cranked up the thrust to 1.7 million pounds by cooling the propellants. This version celebrated a milestone with the first successful booster landing at Cape Canaveral, paving the way for the Block 5 upgrade. Falcon 9 Block 5 kept the same dimensions but increased thrust to 1.8 million pounds. It featured major upgrades, including improved turbo pumps, stronger titanium grid fins, a new thermal coating, and a reusable heat shield. The landing legs were redesigned to be extendable and retractable. Thanks to these enhancements, Block 5's lifespan went from an initial estimate of 10 launches to over 15. As of July 2024, B1058 had already completed 16 flights, and SpaceX engineers believe Block 5 could handle up to 60 launches. For comparison, the Space Shuttle Discovery, which completed the most missions of any shuttle with 39 shows, Falcon 9's impressive reusability. But wait, throughout our discussion about rockets, we've covered many aspects, but missed the most important component that SpaceX has also revolutionized. Honestly, without this breakthrough, their achievement would have been impossible. We're talking about SpaceX's engine. As started this video saying that SpaceX really makes waves in the aerospace world with its daring approach and knack for turning wild ideas into reality, their Raptor engine for the Starship is just another example of that. And it all started with the Merlin engine, which was the very first production rocket engine of SpaceX. The Merlin 1C was behind the successful launch of Falcon 1 and the early Falcon 9 flights. Nowadays, the Merlin 1D is still going strong, powering Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters. In the early days, SpaceX was all about creating a simple, affordable rocket engine, despite facing a lot of skepticism and financial challenges. Elon Musk used his PayPal earnings and put all his money in developing this engine, focusing on keeping costs low and simplicity high. But before we discuss why this engine is great, you need to understand how does a rocket engine work? Otherwise, everything will sound boring. Rocket engine mainly uses two propellant tanks, one for oxygen and one for fuel. Oxygen has to be chilled to extremely low temperatures, like negative 183 degrees Celsius, to become a liquid, while the fuel RP-1, a type of kerosene, must be liquid at room temperature. These are pumped into the combustion chamber where they ignite and create high pressure exhaust. This exhaust then shoots out through the nozzle, turning pressure into thrust as it expands.
fans. Now, coming to the Merlin engine, twin pumps for fuel and oxygen are driven by a gas generator, a mini rocket engine that shoots fire into a turbine. The combustion makes the turbine spin, which then powers the fuel and oxygen pumps. Any extra gas is expelled through an exhaust pipe. You won't believe that this open cycle gas generator design is not at all a new technology. Rather, it dates back to the 1944 German V2 rocket. Then why use this technology out of nowhere? Because it fits Elon Musk's goal for a budget-friendly rocket engine. Now, with the Raptor engine, SpaceX has switched to using methane as the fuel instead of kerosene. Methane, which also needs to be liquefied at super low temperatures, burns much cleaner than kerosene. Kerosene leaves behind soot and residue that can clog engines, which is a problem for reusable engines like Merlin that need to be cleaned between flights. But methane burns more completely, leaving no residue, similar to how natural gas burns cleanly in your home appliances. And now, the modern Raptor engine is a marvel of modern rocket science built with a full flow stage combustion cycle that involves a lot of moving parts. Think pumps, turbines, and intricate plumbing. Unlike older engines, the Raptor uses two separate gas turbines, one for fuel and one for oxygen, each with its own pump. So how does it work? Cryogenic liquids are first turned into gas using small engines. Point to be noted, cryogenic liquids are the particular fluids that are stored and handled at extremely low temperatures, typically below minus 150 degrees Celsius. Once the liquid is converted into gas, a little bit of oxygen is mixed with methane and vice versa. This gas then spins the turbines, which push the propellants into the combustion chamber under high pressure. When it's time to ignite, SpaceX uses equipment on the long launch mount to get things started. This launch mount, or stage zero, is essential for firing up the Raptor engines. The Raptor engine operates in a closed cycle, which means there's no exhaust pipe for gas to escape. Methane and oxygen go through a pre-burner before entering the combustion chamber, which is part of what makes the Raptor's staged combustion cycle so efficient. In the combustion chamber, the reaction between high-pressure gases of oxygen and methane is extremely extremely efficient. Elon Musk says it achieves over 99% efficiency, which is as close as you can get to perfection according to physics. Overall, starting the Raptor engine is indeed a complex process that requires precise coordination between the fuel and oxygen systems to avoid failures, but it's also the most efficient process we have ever had. The Raptor 2 generates 230 metric tons of thrust at sea level. While that's less than the F-1 engine used in the Saturn V rocket, the Raptor is much smaller and lighter. For comparison, the RS-25 engines produce about 1,990 metric tons of thrust, but weigh nearly 3,200 kilograms each, whereas the Raptor weighs just 1,600 kilograms. This efficiency comes from the Raptor's high combustion chamber pressure of 300 bar, compared to the Merlin engine's 1 100 bar, but their reinvention journey is not really over yet. Elon Musk is still on a mission to make the Raptor engine simpler, cheaper, and quicker to produce. His design mantra, the best part is no part, means he's all about questioning what's necessary, cutting out the fluff, and refining every detail. Basically, his goal is to make the engine more efficient by merging components, using fewer heat shields, and making it lighter and more affordable. But what's the ultimate vision behind all these? Something big, of course, such as building at least 1,000 Starship rockets, which will fly as often as commercial jets connecting Earth with Mars, the Moon, and possibly possibly even provide rapid transport around our planet. You didn't expect this big of a vision, did you? And most importantly, do you think it would ever be possible? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more.